Hey everybody, glad you stopped by to check this video out and we have something new here. We have the Siru 1.25 X Anamorphic Adapter and I've got it in front of the Siru 1.33 Anamorphic Lens. So what does that mean? It gets wide. In fact, if you put this on a 16.9 sensor, you're going to be way too wide unless you're into like a, and this is off the top of my head, like a 3 to 1 ratio. But if you go to something like the Fuji X-H2S open gate, which is 3.2, you come out with something that's pretty close to 2.39. And I'm sorry if I'm not giving you all the exact math here. Feel free to go figure it out because there's too many variables involved here to keep this straight. Let's talk about this adapter. It's all metal. It's super heavy. It's well built. It's got a large diameter, which means it'll fit on front of a lot of lenses. What I have found in practical experience in terms of an actual spherical lens, if you're going for that 125 straight anamorphic look with a spherical taking lens, I think about the widest depending on the lens and how much space there is with the filter threads. 35 to 28, depending on lens, is about as wide as you can go with this adapter. Sadly, this adapter will not work with the Siru 24 millimeter. It almost looks like a fisheye um, kind of adapter because you see the whole adapter. It eats up quite a bit of the frame. Of course, it works on the 75 or anything longer. The combination of the adapter and the lens finally starts taking some of that edge off and mellows out. The sharpness of that lens and who'd ever think we'd be complaining about a lens being too sharp certainly not a lot of camera review sites anyway let's talk about focus on this this adapter is designed to focus on the front here which means you set your taking lens to infinity and then on the front you focus as normal and this works fine with a focus motor or a mechanical follow focus up until the fact that you realize that once you're all the way here, you're out at about three feet. It depends on the lenses, the taking lens that you've got on here. So if that's the case, you're not quite there. You can take the taking lens and focus this back and you can get fairly close. I think down to about a foot or so, depending on the uh, combination that you've got. So that works fine. It's just something to be aware of. And certainly, you can do something like if you need to focus really close to say 12 feet, you can find a spot where you focus the taking lens, focus the adapter out towards infinity, get your distance sharp, and then see how your front focus works and figure it out. It's, it's a little putsy and that's just the nature of doing these things, which brings me up to another important point here. You have to orient this adapter to be level. If you don't have this lens level, everything's going to get skewed one way or the other. Every time you change a lens, you have to adjust this adapter. Now, it's got this button here at lock, so if you screw this snug, uh, it will allow you to get this into the right spot. And there are two ways of doing it. One, you could get the camera level, especially if you've got a uh, in-camera level line like the Fujis do. It's pretty easy to guarantee you've got your camera level, look through something in the lens that you also know is horizontally level, you can even use a level, and adjust from there. The other quicker way of doing it is to just realize that this button on top has little click stops that you got to push it in and move it. And you can use that and line it up with the top of your camera. And pretty much, I'd say 98% of the time, this is exactly where it needs to be, or it's close enough that you're good to go. This also makes the point that every time you change this lens and change the adapter, that's a certain amount of time. And if you're only going to bounce around between two or three lenses, but you're going to change lenses a lot, and you're on a long enough production, it starts to make sense that you might want to buy one of these adapters for each lens so that you just got straight lens changes and you leave these things alone. I know, it's expensive, but in the comparison of what do real anamorphic lenses cost, it's still a bargain. Um, so it's a, it's a thought, it's something to think about, and, you know, I made the point.
Another thing I want to point out is that you should use a quality adapter, assuming that your taking lens doesn't match exactly the threads of the 125 adapter. And the reason for that is that these threads tend to bind. The cheap adapters tend to not work so well. Siru does kindly give you a set of adapters that will cover most common sizes. And if you've got nothing, they'll work. But if you can afford better quality adapter rings, you're not going to regret it when needing to change this thing out. And of course, um, trade secret is take a pencil or a graphite pencil and lubricate threads on both sides of the adapter with a little bit of graphite. You just run it around two or three times, get the graphite into the threads, and then you'll pretty much avoid, for the most part, having these things ever get locked together and you have to fight with them. But with the better adapters, they have some kind of texture, nubs, knobs. They'll give you the ability to get a little bit better grab and separate them if they do bind up. Anyway, enough of that. Let's just see some images out of this combination now that I finally got some stuff shot with it. That's it. I hope you like what you saw and like, subscribe, you know the deal, and we'll see you next time.